What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be breaking down the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 15th of May, any day trades, any swing trades I took, we're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as getting into some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching, two that a subscriber actually Actually ended up messaging me. I'm going to break those down as well. And we're going to also just talk about what my mindset is, how I'm viewing the current stock market, and what my plans are over these next couple of weeks. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And without further ado, guys, Let's just get right into it. So the SPX, the S&P 500, went up today $16.55 at the close, up 0.58% on the day. And we got some news that spiked up the market that auto sales on European, or not auto sales, auto tariffs on European vehicles are set to be delayed by the Trump administration. So do some more research into that. I don't want to get too deep into that. But pretty much, guys, that ended up pumping up the markets today, plain and simple, right? This happened literally right here, popped up, we got that good news, the market popped up, literally in, in a snap of a finger, it popped up about 15, 20 points here in terms of the SPX, and it was uphill from there. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing the day up 115 points, up 0.45%. We can see that big spike up once that news did end up coming out. And the NASDAQ Composite here, guys, let's see exactly where it closed at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ended up closing at about 75.20. Three, so it was definitely a green day for um, the NASDAQ. It was up about 1.5%, I think, on the day, although it does say here it's down 12, but mind you, this is the future. It's currently down 12 since the, uh, the bell um, a couple of hours ago, and so is the ES, which is the E-mini S&P futures. Both of these futures are currently red, and so is the Dow Jones Industrial Average future here, down 28 points. So, what ended up happening today, guys? We can see again the auto tariffs that ended up popping up the markets. And overall, guys, you may be thinking to yourself now, the markets are reversing, right? We've had two straight days of green. And if you think that, you know, I, you're, you're, you're on a technical basis, you're kind of... um. Off. And let me show you guys here on the 20 day one hour what I mean by that. So we're technically still downtrending, believe it or not, right? Although we did have these two green days, right? The technicals do not lie. We're still trending below the 50 simple moving average here on the 20 day one hour chart. And we're actually seeing quite a bit of resistance there towards the end of the market, right? We're noticing that on the 20 day one hour, right? We can see we kind of had a similar situation a couple of days ago, right? We had that pump up recovery day followed by another big little pump up recovery day two days in a row. And what did we have today, guys? We had a recovery day followed by another recovery day. And just like we saw here, we ended up getting rejected by the 50 SMA and we're kind of in the same spot right now. So this is actually, you know, a very, very critical spot for the SPX, right? You know, two days in a row, green, you may think that we're reversing Reversing to the upside based on this good news, based on some longer term chart technicals, but we are still downtrending. We are still downtrending on the 20 day one hour. But let's say tomorrow we pop out to the upside here. We start to test maybe a resistance at about 28.80 from a couple of days ago. That would be a pretty strong confirmation that we are reversing to the upside. And let me explain on the longer term charts, it may seem like we are reversing to the upside, but again, I use multiple time frames. I look at some smaller time frame charts to get a better picture of what's happening in the short term, and the short term technicals are still pointing down, although these long term ones here, the 184 hour chart, it's kind of showing us 
quite frankly, holding the 180 SMA support and kind of building a higher, high, higher low staircase pattern um, above it, successfully holding it as a support. But again, until we get that breakout on the smaller term charts, I'm not viewing this as a full on reversal to the upside quite yet. So SPX, Watch tomorrow the 20-day chart. Watch tomorrow this longer-term chart. Are we going to break this 180 SMA to the downside? Are we going to you know, continue to push up, which is going to be pretty confirming tomorrow if we do break out of the 20-day 50 SMA resistance that I mean, we might be recovering to the upside, right? So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, again, up 115 on the day, ended up closing um, right above this support, actually, right? This old resistance from back in the beginning of February. We ended up maintaining it as a new support level, looking to trade in between the horizontal channel right now between 25 500 and about 26 200 so we're trading literally within a 700 point window right now and in terms of technicals here we're trending below the 180 SMA uh, resistance right now right we're noticing a potential bearish cross here starting to form if the 50 SMA does end up crossing below the 180 SMA and if we're hopping over here to the 20 day one hour just like the SPX guys we're trading below the 50 simple moving average this level is a resistance we are still at a lower high from the previous meaning the downtrend is still intact although we had two straight days of recovery guys i'm trying to nail this into your heads because a lot of people out there now think you know just because we had two days in a row of green that the markets are full-on reversing right and they're not to be quite honest with you all just based off of these technicals that i am seeing right here so the nasdaq on the 20 day one hour you'll likely see the same thing right we ended up breaking out of the 50 sma right we ended up breaking out of that one but we're still trending below the 180 simple moving average resistance here and we're also at a resistance at about 7530 right now which we can see on the longer term charts is actually a resistance stemming back from the end of March in 2019 and this is a very very critical resistance and it's also putting us under the 50 SMA resistance here on the 184 hour chart so pretty much guys the whole market right now is at a, at, a, at a critical spots, right? All of these three major indexes that we talk about on this channel to analyze the U.S. stock market, they're all at resistances right now on their smaller time frame charts, and the downtrends are still intact on the smaller time frame charts, regardless of what the larger time frame charts are telling us. And the fact that these futures right now are slowly starting to turn uh, red, right? We're noticing the a the ES, the NQ, the YM, these three these three indexes futures they're turning red, right? And let's say this ends up dragging into the rest of today, maybe into the middle of the night, maybe into pre-market hours if it continues to drag red that's going to tell me markets are reversing or just really just continuing the downtrend really pushing more to the downside and that's just what i'm watching for guys the futures are how i end up planning my my day for trading right and we can see you know, going back to the uh, uh, ES very quickly, because this kind of stems in to what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. If we look on the one day, one minute here, we noticed how we were pretty much downtrending all the way through the night into the market open, which led me to get into TVIX actually. And I ended up taking a little bit of a loss there because we got that good news, literally, we got that good news when I entered into my TVIX position, like I entered into the TVIX position um, right before that news came out, then I saw the pop, I took a little loss on TVIX, and I actually switched my money into uh, TQQQ, which is actually really funny because a subscriber commented on my previous video that I uploaded today talking about three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade during this crazy trade war drama and he literally or she I don't know if it's a girl or a boy but they literally commented exactly 
what I personally did in terms of my trades for what they did on their trades, right? They literally did the same thing as me, which is a crazy coincidence. They commented, you know, they, they got into, uh, I believe it was like SQQQQ or SQQQ three Qs, which is another uh, short ETF that goes up when the markets are going down. They got into that right around the same time. And then, then, then that news came out popped up, right, and they ended up getting out of that into, uh, uh, you know, what's the other one, TQQQ, and they made some money on the upside, and I find it funny because, again, that's literally what I ended up doing today, and uh, we can see on the TVIX chart, right, we can see, or actually, let's go back to the SPX so I can explain a little bit deeper into what I ended up doing, right, so I noticed this morning, we gapped down, right? We were red. It seems like we were going to be red for the entire day when we gapped down here. We started to pop up. We started to fill the gap from yesterday's close. And then I started to see the strong resistance under the 50 SMA. And I was telling myself, okay, this is a spot. This is a point in time. We're hopping into TVIX on the reversal to the downside on the SPX will be a good move, right? And we can see here... At this time period, at about 10 a.m., TVIX was on a little bit of a dip, right? We noticed the big dip, 10 a.m., or actually right around here, 10 a.m., I noticed we were pulling down. We were slowly getting rejected again by that 50 SMA on the SPX. I started to uh, enter into here as we were holding above this 180, right, on this, on this TVIX chart. And then, boom, guys, it dumped. Took a little bit of a loss there, and I quickly transitioned into um, TQQQ due to the massive, massive push that um, the the uh, what's it called the uh, S and P and the whole entire market had due to that news with auto right the auto tariffs being uh, postponed, I believe until like May 18th or something like that. So that pretty much um, you know once. We saw the reversal to the downside. You know, again, TQQQ hopped in. I did some research, figured out why the markets were pushing up, and then TQQQ did absolutely phenomenal, right? It went from $55 up to around $60. And this is an ETF, again, that does well. It goes up when the markets are healthy and going up. And on the flip side, another one that goes down, again, when the markets are going up, or uh, down or up, this one, guys, sorry for confusing you. This one, TQQQ goes up when markets go up. SQQQ, this one that I'm popping up here, goes down when markets go up, and it goes up when markets go down, hence why it crashed through the uh, floor today. So that's pretty much it for my trading update, guys. Took a little day trade in TQQQ on that big reversal. Took a little loss on TVIX, but pretty much recouped the loss and profited on the upside on the TQQQ day trade. So that's it for me in terms of trading. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up doing. Two stocks I want to break down for a subscriber very quickly. Then we'll get into some other ones that I'm watching very briefly before we wrap up this video. So Nike is the first one that I got requested to analyze for today's video. So Nike right now has been very choppy based off of what I'm seeing here in these technicals, right? we can see and we realize that Nike is a company that does get affected by trade war stuff they are a big player um in China, and it, and it makes sense, quite frankly, right? This stock, clearly based off of what we're seeing over the past couple of trading days, right? Especially since this day here, you know, heading into, you know, uh, the, the, the month of May, and then we, we got the Trump tweet. Actually, did this really? No, it didn't drop from the Trump tweet. I thought it did for a second. It seems like it's been holding up pretty decently over this sell-off, which... That's not bad, but I do think overall it can get affected very heavily by the trade war, but that's a whole different topic here. So just judging off of these technicals, you know, we're seeing Nike holding $80 as support. We're seeing the resistance at about 
90, 88 to 90 ish dollars here. We got a rejection in the beginning of March, another rejection towards the end of March, rejection again in the middle of April. We sold off. We've been consolidating very strongly here a couple of days on the 81 level of support, which is a very, very good sign. And now it's looking like we're fighting that. 50 simple moving average on the 184 hour chart. And quite honestly, I'm liking the technicals here on Nike. I'm thinking, honestly, if we break out of this 50 SMA, right? And then we ultimately break out of this old support, which is now a new resistance at about 84, 84, 20 ish, literally right where we are right now. If we break these two levels of resistance, I think it's a straight shot up to about 85.50, which is going to be the next resistance, also putting us under the 180 simple moving average resistance. And at that point in time, you know, from where we are now, if we do break this 50 SMA up to the 180 SMA, that's a quick little 1.67% margin of profit, right? This can this can be ground that's covered in one or two trading days, right? Let's say if the markets do well. And let's say we end up breaking out of the 180 SMA resistance. That's literally a straight shot up to 88-ish, 90-ish dollars, which again, we saw we've been seeing some resistance at over the past couple of trading weeks. So I do see potential in Nike. I really do see a lot of potential here. We just need to get up to that 180 SMA test it. If we break it, that could be a breakout offering up to around 4% um, above that 180 SMA. So I am really liking Nike. Thank you for the call out. This is one that I'm watching for sure over these next couple of days. So XOM is another one that he wanted me to talk about. And this is Exxon Mobil, right? We know this company. A lot of us already should know this company, one of the biggest companies out there. And what I'm seeing here based off of a just glance here, based off just brief technicals, we're noticing that Exxon, uh, uh, not Exxon, Exxon is kind of in the same predicament as Nike in the, in the sense that it's trending towards the bottom of its channel, right? In this case, the bottom of the channel on XOM is at about $76, but unlike Nike, that is you know, which is rather looking to consolidate already and popping up towards a um, SMA resistance, XOM has not quite yet consolidated, right? We're noticing how, especially on the smaller time frame charts here, I guess you can say it is consolidating over the past couple of days, I guess you can say, but for me, it's not enough consolidation and it's not quite yet a we haven't quite yet seen a push to the upside, which is going to confirm the upwards reversal on the longer charts quite yet for me personally to like it, right? And we see on the 184 hour, we're still trending below the 50 simple moving average resistance, right? We would need to see at least a further push up to the 78 level before I'd even consider it because at that point, we'd be breaking on top of the resistance here. We'd be, you know, testing quite frankly, breaking out of old resistances as well from the past couple of months. We notice how, you know, a resistance, which was a previous support, is literally at around $76, $77 where we're trading right now. So I'd personally feel more comfortable if we consolidated a bit more here, ended up popping up, breaking the, the resistances, both the 50 SMA and then this one from a couple of months ago. And at that point, guys, if we're starting to get into the 77, 78s, maybe even back into, you know, the low 80s, that could be a good opportunity in my personal opinion. Just waiting on the reversal here, but I am liking the way it's setting up right now, but it's just not quite there yet for me to get into it. So tomorrow, guys, these are two that I'm definitely watching. And again, thank you for the shout out. So let's talk about some other ones here that I'm personally watching. Again, we saw the futures. They're looking red right now. We saw the markets in general. They're at resistance level. So I'm planning on trading TVIX or SQQQ tomorrow if the markets do end up selling off and if this 
Um, the futures, quite frankly, show that they're selling off early in, in the pre-market session tomorrow. When I wake up, I see the futures. Are they down a percent? 0.5%. If they are, that may lead me to believe we might have a red day. And at that point, I'm going to be thinking to myself, okay, TVIX, SQQQ kind of day. That's what it's going to be. So tomorrow, TVIX and SQQQ are going to be on the forefront of my watch list, right? We got the big pullback. TVIX today has nice margin of profit, right? Just like SQQQ or just like TVIX rather, SQQQ, same exact situation, right? Pulled back, nice margin of profit, looking to potentially hop in tomorrow if the markets are proving to me, showing to me that they are selling off in the morning. So let's say we end up making a bullish move on the 20 day, one hour chart. I'm going to just literally play again what I played today. And that's going to be T with three Q's. T Q Q Q. This is one that goes up when the markets are selling off. No need to go over that again. So there's actually three more that I'm watching, but they're in another video, the video before this. So go check out that video. I don't want to just talk about them again because I made a whole separate video for three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade during the trade war. So go check out that video after this. I would really appreciate it. You'll find a ton of value in it. And that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already already hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video and drop a comment let me know how you guys ended up doing today I would love to know so I'll catch you all in the next video have a good rest of your night peace out